It's nearly two months since I took this car out on the road, so today it's time to give it a little test run after a check over and a wash because it was getting quite dusty. And today I'm on a hunt for history because I'm heading to an area about 20 kilometres away from me where there were airfields in World War II and some terrible accidents happened. Uh, there's not much left of the airfields these days, but there is uh, a, a few signs of uh, where they were used to be, including one very large one, which is an entire street. So anyway, let's take the aircraft-inspired XT Vortex down to Strathpine and Petrie and have a look at what's left. Well, here's my first stop, Launton Pocket Road, and it's very overgrown. There is some housing happening further up, maybe that's due to make its way down here, but it won't go too far down because there are some hazards in the soil just beyond that uh, corner of the road. Let's go and have a look. Down this end is all pretty open, and there are lots of warning signs saying there's an unstable ground surface and a risk of drowning. I presume that's from the uh, quarry or uh, gravel works that are uh, going on down the end of the street. But it's uh, just beyond this point where the World War II runway for Petrie began. So just beyond those gates down the road a bit and it headed off to the northwest. It was in trying to land at the Petrie airfield that 2nd Lieutenant Maxwell Jones of the USAF was killed in uh, 1942. Apparently it was a difficult strip to land at because of the trees surrounding it. You had to sort of do some strange manoeuvres to uh, get your approach right and he must have mucked that up. Well, I'm here at Launton Lakes which is a new housing estate going in and I've reached the end of one road but somewhere over there possibly beyond those piles of gravel is where the end of the Petrie runway was where that terrible crash happened. Anyway let's move on to another airstrip now where there's some actual evidence that it used to be there and it's also related to another tragic crash. I'm just down the road from that Launton Petrie runway and behind me is the showgrounds for the local area where of course the RAAF was based, had its camp in that area too. It's not. It's close to both uh, the Strathpine and Petrie runways. While the Petrie runway is covered in grass and about to be covered in either housing or industrial, this is the Strathpine runway and the big indi indicator is the name of the street, Spitfire Avenue. This follows the exact line of the A1 runway. I'm about to take a drive down it I'm heading down Spitfire Avenue and all of the side streets are named after aircraft. We've got Lancaster here, there's also a Wirraway, I saw a Lincoln. And uh, I'm driving down this street in a Japanese car that was inspired by aircraft. So the irony is not lost on me, but uh, this car was made a good 40 years after all that unpleasantness. I'm here near the intersection of Young's Crossing Road and Dabra Road and this is relating to the tragedy surrounding Spitfires on the Strathpine airstrip. And they've put up a special little memorial to it in the park here. Let's have a look. So basically some Spitfires took off from Strathpine airstrip uh, and one of them decided uh, well three of them decided to do a mock attack on their leader uh, and unfortunately for the final plane it managed to collide with the other Spitfire. This just brings it home to you the uh, one of the planes, one of the Spitfires, crashed into the North Pine River. 
Uh, and the squadron leader's plane crashed right here where this indent is been marked out by the creek. Both pilots were buried at Lutwick Cemetery. There's one more aside to this story and it concerns this new McDonald's outlet that's gone in here in the last couple of years. But it seems that there was some history here relating to the Strathpine uh, and Petrie airstrips and even the Energex boxes taken into account as well round about where that uh, white car is coming out now there was what's known as an igloo hangar at the back of what was a modern car sales building there was an obvious hangar behind it and uh, the website ozatwar.com wonders whether it was really linked with uh, Strathpine Strip and and or Petrie um, saying there wasn't any evidence of it in aerial photos at the time but there was a bit of cover around which may well have covered it up so right about there was a hangar and it seems to be celebrated as a RAF item on this box so if you know any more about it, tell the people behind ozatwar.com because they're keen to know. And it's here in this industrial estate on Deacon Street in Brendale that the third piece of the puzzle is put into place and that is that there used to be another Strathpine airstrip here, mainly used by American forces, and this park has a little remembrance of it on a sign there. So it's too hot to be out today. I've taken the car for a run, it's past with flying colours and now it's time to head home. <laughs>